One of the things that we actually enjoy best of all on Blue Peter is being able to show brand new inventions. Earlier today, we recorded an experiment here in the studio that should be of interest to anyone who ever has to use the telephone. We started off with two telephones, and this one was perfectly normal. It's the sort of phone you've probably got at home. It's got a handset, a curly bit of wire that goes down to here, and then a cable that goes all the way to the telephone exchange. Well, I've got the other telephone here, and it looks more like a, a shoulder bag, really, than a proper telephone. It's got its own portable handset here, which has its own dial built into it. And the thing that makes it so unusual is if I get up and walk around, you'll see that there are absolutely no trailing cables of any kind. It's not connected to anything at all, because it's got its own built-in transmitter and receiver. Well, there's nothing really extraordinary, I suppose, in having a sort of walkie-talkie radio, but this is the first one that you can actually use with an ordinary telephone. And the other good thing about it is that uh, when you use it, you don't have to dial through the operator as you would with an ordinary mobile car phone. Well, we're going to give you a demonstration of how this new invention works. Now, on my phone here, I'm extension 84. You are indeed, and I'm extension 85. Remember oh, it, John? Yes, in my memory confused. bank. <coughs> You're 84, OK? I'll tell you what. Petra and I will stay here in a nice warm studio. You can take Shep for a while. I knew you were going to say that. Well, I will. Come on, Shep, you come with me, because I'm going to go right out of the studio, out to the Blue Peter Garden. Now, this uh, portable telephone is the invention of an American scientist, Mr. Lou Schnur, and he's a teacher at uh, the Chelms uh, Chelmer Institute in Chelmsford, Essex. And he said he doesn't see any reason why in the future it wouldn't be possible for just about everybody to be walking around carrying one of these, their own portable communication set. Anyway, last time I was out of doors, it was pouring down with rain, so I'm taking no chances today. Get my coat on, and off I go. I'll get a hood out just in case as well. We're in Studio 8 at the television centre today. I'm just walking through the huge scene dock doors. This is where we get things like stuffed elephants and double-decker buses into the studio. Uh, outside here, there's a ring road. This is used for moving scenery around. And if you watch Top of the Pops, you probably recognise that bit of uh, scenery there. Anyway, I'm going out through the doors now. And uh, once outside here, on my right over there is the BBC canteen block. And if you've watched Blue Peter regularly, then you'll know that our garden is very close. In fact, right next door to the canteen block. In fact, it's over uh, the road here. As you can see, it's pretty horrible out here. Really wet and nasty. I feel the right twerp in this hood, but uh, I'd rather wear it than get soaked to the skin. Whoops, it's slippery as well. Hi, Sheppy, you like it, don't you? And uh, down at the end there, is our actual Blue Peter garden. Now, anyway, I'm not going to do some gardening this minute. I'm out here to test this. So the first thing I've got to do, make sure it's switched on, which it is, put up my aerial. Now, two things I must do. First of all, by the magic of television, you'll be able to see Johnny waiting for my call at the same time as I'm speaking to you. So first of all, to make sure I've got a line, dial zero. That's the same as picking up a handset. That's it, I've got the line. Now, his number, 84, and it's ringing in the studio. Hello, John Noakes here. Hello, John, fancy seeing you, <laughs> or rather hearing you. I can't <laughs> see you at all, actually. What's it like out there? It's soaking wet, as well you know, but it's lovely in the studio, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely and dry. And I'm going to send Shep back in to jump all over you. He's getting soaked <laughs> rushing around <laughs> out here at the moment. Anyway, we've shown that it works this way, me dialing you. So don't put the phone down for a minute, because I've got to cancel the circuits first. So I'm going to press the button now, and you'll hear the dots, the little clicking sound. That's it. It's gone now. So uh, the circuit's now clear for Johnny to try to ring me. Well, the clicking sounds have stopped, so if I put it back down, pick it up, his number was 80, uh, oh, 85, yes. All right, it should be ringing. There we go. Every time a winner. Hello, Hello Pete. Johnny. Yeah, me. Wonderful. Oh, it works. It does. Look, I'm getting soaked out here, so <laughs> do you mind if we don't have a long conversation? Oh, all right, if you insist. Smashing. I'm going to cancel the circuits again. Don't put it down too soon, otherwise you upset everything. Okay. And that's it, cancelled again. So, that's it, I think we've proved that Mr. Schnur's invention actually works. But I dare say you're a little confused about how it works when there aren't any cables and all the rest of it. Well, the answer is, it does have to have a separate transmitter somewhere. Well, the one that we're using is way up there with Leslie on the television centre roof. It's approximately 30 metres above ground level, and as you can see from here, I've got a very good view of peat and a rather soggy, damp-looking Blue Peter garden. 
The aerial and the transmitter, which have been relaying the conversations to and from Peter's uh, roving phone, are ordinary pieces of radio equipment. The interesting piece is fitted in underneath the transmitter, behind this plate here. There's lots of special circuits, and it's the circuits which have been dealing not only with the simple conversational side of the exercise, but also with the actual dialing mechanism part, and that is the tricky bit. Well, if you use your mobile phone anywhere within a seven-mile radius of this equipment, you should actually be able to speak to a friend from all sorts of places, up a mountain, uh, in a boat in the middle of a lake, or in the middle of a field. And uh, I do think that uh, this development is going to be a great boon to people who are very busy, but who need to uh, communicate with people who are at a bit of a distance and who haven't got a proper telephone handy. Uh, people like businessmen and particularly farmers and doctors. Very good development indeed.